Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the Peekaboo Lovey, which is this little guy that you see here. This is my prototype here. Uh, as you can see, it's simply a head of a bear with a couple little arms sticking out attached to a square uh, piece of fabric, a square small blankie. Now if you have worked my Peekaboo blanket, baby blanket, you will recognize this pattern from that blanket. It is just a smaller version of it. Uh, so if you're doing a baby shower gift, it might be fun to have the larger peekaboo blanket along with this little peekaboo lovey to go uh, together. Now this uh, little guy is made with about 270 yards of your favorite worsted weight yarn. I have used the Karen Cotton Cakes. I love the feel of them. Uh, and I just thought they lent themselves very well to a uh, baby product. So you'll need about 270 yards. You're also going to need a six millimeter crochet hook and a four millimeter crochet hook. The six millimeter will be used for the blanket portion, the four millimeter for the head, ears, and arms of your lovey. You will need one stitch marker as well as a needle for sewing in your ends and for sewing on the body parts. And you'll also need a small amount of fiber fill. You can also find the free written pattern for this peekaboo lovey on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. Uh, you can find it there and uh, be sure to uh, follow me on social media and as well my blog uh, if you enjoy this pattern. So thank you so much for joining me today. As always, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. And uh, I hope that you enjoy these patterns and the stitch tutorials that I also offer each week. So what we are going to do is uh, with our yarn, we are going to grab our six millimeter crochet hook and our yarn, and we will get started on our peekaboo lovey. So thank you so much for joining me here once again. While you're here, please don't forget, forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's updated with uh, frequent crochet patterns as well as stitch tutorials weekly. So today for the pattern, we are going to start, it's worked in several different pieces. We're going to start with this uh, square blanket piece down at the bottom, which if you have worked the peek-a-boo blanket, you will notice that this is just a smaller version of that blanket, and that blanket is also found here on my YouTube channel, as well as on my blog in a written crochet pattern format. So we're going to work a smaller version of that square blanket. It is worked in rows with a final uh, edging that's worked in a round. So you're going to start by taking your worsted weight yarn or your cotton cake, if that's what you're choosing to use. You're going to make your slip knot and you're going to chain 49 chains. Once you have your chain of 49, you are going to begin by working your first row and to do so you're going to work a single crochet stitch in the third chain from your hook so count in three one two three and in that third chain you're going to place your first single crochet stitch we are going to be working a pattern that is often referred to as the moss stitch so you have your chain two your single crochet you're then going to chain one skip the next chain and single crochet in the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across. Chain one, skip one, and single crochet in the next stitch. So continue to repeat that all the way across. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next stitch, placing your final single crochet stitch in that last chain. Once you have come to that final chain, 
you've worked your single crochet stitch, you are going to chain two and turn your work. You're now set to begin row two. For row two, you're going to skip that first single crochet stitch and you're going to work a single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next single crochet and single crochet in the next chain one space. Repeat that all the way across. Chain one, skip the next single crochet and single crochet in the next chain one space. Continue that all the way across and when you come to the end of your row, you are going to work your final single crochet stitch in that starting chain two. So in that chain two space, that's where you're going to work your final single crochet stitch. So I'm coming up on the end of my row two, I've chained one, then into that chain two space, I work my final single crochet stitch. It's always important to remember to work into that final chain two, otherwise your sides will not be straight and they're going to be a little bit straight, uh, a little bit um, crooked. So make sure that you always place your final single crochet into that chain two space. At the end of your row two, you are going to chain two and turn your work. Now for the next uh, several rows or many rows, you are simply going to repeat that row two. So you've chained two, skip the first single crochet stitch and work one single crochet in that chain one space. Chain one, repeat the next single, uh, skip the next single crochet stitch and single crochet in the chain one space. So again, repeat that all the way across. And so you're going to continue to repeat that row, that was row two, until the work from the beginning measures approximately 10 inches. Or if you would like your blanket to be a little bit larger, you're welcome to continue or smaller, um, but you're going to continue until it's about 10 inches. So you're going to have a square of fabric. Once you have completed your desired length, you will be ready to work the edging. There's no need to fasten off. Uh, you can just continue on with the edging following uh, completing the body of the blanket. So now here is my completed body of the blanket. It's just a very nice, simple moss stitch fabric. I love the moss stitch and baby blankets because there's no holes and it's just such a great texture. Now, once you have that square completed and you've worked to 10 inches or to the desired length, you do not need to fasten off, but you are going to uh, start working your edging. So I chained one and I turned my work, or you could fasten off and rejoin if you would like in the top right hand corner if you're right handed. You're going to start by chaining one and you're going to work a single crochet stitch in each single crochet and each chain one all the way across the top. So single crochet in each stitch and each chain space all the way across. When you come to your corner stitch, so that's going to be that chain two space. When you come to your corner stitch, you are going to work three single crochet stitches all into that same corner stitch. That's going to bring you around to work on this rough edge of your fabric. Now what you're going to do is you're going to work 45 single crochet stitches all the way along this rough edge and if it helps you want them to be fairly even so if it helps I would mark your fabric about halfway down with a stitch marker and then you know you want to have half your stitches on one side half your stitches on the other side you can have more or less stitches just remember that you want to have the same number of stitches on this side as you do on the other side, okay? So just keep track of how many stitches you have. I found that 45 stitches worked well in my blanket, but depending on your tension, you may want to have more or less. So work 45 stitches along this rough edge. When you come to your corner, you're going to work three single crochet stitches in your corner. 
You're then going to turn and you're going to single crochet in each stitch and chain space all the way across. Work three more single crochet stitches in that corner. Work 45 stitches along the opposite rough edge. And then when you come to your first corner stitch, you're going to work two final single crochet stitches in it. And that will bring you around uh, to the beginning. You're going to join in that first stitch with a slip stitch and get ready for round two. I am just joining the end of my round one with a slip stitch. At the end of the round one, you do not need to turn your work. You're going to continue working in the same direction. For round two, you're going to chain one. You're going to work a single crochet in that first stitch and in each stitch all the way around. When you come to your corner stitches, you will work three single crochet stitches in each corner. Uh, and then when you come back to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch in the top stitch. So work one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. At the end of round two, you will join with your slip stitch in that first stitch. You're going to chain one, and at this point, you are going to turn your work. This way, when you work your puff stitches, they're all going to come out on the right side of your fabric. For round two, you're going to begin by working a single crochet in the same stitch as joining, single crochet in the next stitch, at your corner stitch, work three single crochet stitches. Single crochet in the next. You're now going to work a puff stitch. To work a puff stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. You're going to do that for a total of four times. So that was the first time. You're going to do it again, yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over and drop a loop, that was two. Yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over and drop a loop, that's three. Yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over, drop a loop, that's four. You will then have three, six, nine loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and you're going to draw through all nine loops and that is your puff stitch. You're then going to work one single crochet stitch in each of the next three stitches. Next, puff stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. Do that a total of four times. Once you have nine loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through all nine loops. Then work three, one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around your work. So one single crochet in each of the next three stitches followed by a puff stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around your work, being sure that in each corner stitch, you work three single crochet stitches. So continue to repeat that all the way around. When you come back to your first single crochet stitch there, you're going to join with a slip stitch and turn your work. At the end of round three, you're going to join with your slip stitch, you're going to chain one, and you're then going to turn your work once again. So you will see that your puff stitches are now all on the front side of your work. Now for rounds four and rounds five, you are going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Once again, you're going to work your three single crochet stitches in each corner stitch. So you're going to do this round of single crochet stitches twice more, single crochet in each stitch all the way around, working three single crochet stitches in each corner stitch and then join with a slip stitch. 
No need to turn your work, just continue on. At the end of round five, then you can fa uh, fasten off, join with the slip stitch, and then fasten off your work, and then block this part of the blanket if you desire. Okay, so now you should have finished your blanket portion of uh, the lovey, which is here. And once you have finished it and you've woven in your ends, you can then set that portion aside. We're now going to start working on the head portion of our bear. So you're going to grab your four millimeter crochet hook along with a stitch marker and your yarn. To begin the head portion, you're going to start by making a magic ring, however you make your magic ring. Okay, and then you are going to chain one and work six single crochet stitches into the center of that ring. There's one, two, three, four, five, Six. And again, we are working with our four millimeter crochet hook. Now at the end of each round here, you are not going to join. You're going to be working in continuous rounds, which means you're going to need your stitch marker. So for round two, you're going to work two single crochets into each stitch. So not joining, you're not going to turn your work. You're going to work your first single crochet stitch and because you're using the four millimeter hook it might be a little bit tighter it will be a little bit tighter so you might have to just kind of wiggle your hook in there so two single crochet stitches in that first stitch and I'm going to take my stitch marker and mark the first of those two now as I progress my work I'm going to be moving that stitch marker outward so I will always have that first stitch marked so two single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around and at the end of this round you're going to have a total of 12 stitches. Okay. There we go. Round three you are going to single crochet in the next stitch and then work two single crochet stitches in the next. So I'm going to very briefly remove my stitch marker, work one single crochet in the next stitch, replace my stitch marker, and then work two single crochet stitches in the next. I'm going to repeat that all the way around. So one single crochet in the next stitch followed by two single crochet in the next. At the end of this round you're going to have a total of 18 stitches. I'm almost back at my stitch marker two in that final stitch and I'm ready for round four. For round four I'm going to work one single crochet stitch in each of the next two stitches. So there's my first single crochet, put back on my stitch marker, next single crochet in the next stitch, followed by two single crochet in the next then you're going to repeat one single crochet in each of the next two stitches and two single crochet in the next stitch. Repeat that all the way around back to your stitch marker. At the end of this round you are going to have a total of 24 stitches. For round five you are going to single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then work two single crochet in the next stitch. Repeat that all the way around, one single crochet in each of the next 
three stitches and two single crochet in the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around back to your stitch marker and at the end of this round you're going to have a total of 30 single crochet stitches. For round six, you are going to single crochet in each of the next four stitches. And then work two single crochet in the next stitch. Repeat that all the way around, one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. and two single crochet in the next. You are going to continue that all the way around and at the when you reach your stitch marker, you're going to have a total of 36 stitches. For round seven, you are going to single crochet in each of the next five stitches. And then work two single crochet stitches in the next stitch. Repeat that all the way around, single crochet in each of the next five stitches. and work two single crochet in the next stitch. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, you should have a total of 42 stitches. Now for the next six rounds, so rounds eight through to 13, you are going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So for the next six rounds, single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Don't forget to keep marking your first stitch in each round to help you keep count. Uh, and of course for each of these rounds you're going to have a total of 42 single crochet stitches. So work those rounds and then meet me back here and we will begin our decreases. Okay, so now by the end of round 13, uh, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. You can see the head is now forming and uh, it's come in nicely. We're now going to start our decreases. Your decreases are similar uh, to your increase rounds, the ones that we did uh, rounds one through to seven, except instead of working two single crochet in the stitches, we're going to be working two single crochet together over two stitches. So for your round 14, you're going to begin by single crocheting in each of the next five stitches. Five, and then you are going to work a single crochet two together over the next two stitches. So to work your single crochet two together, you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. You're going to insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and draw through all three of those loops. That's your single crochet three together. You're going to repeat that all the way around. So single crochet in each of the next five stitches, followed by a single crochet two together over the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around and remember you will not turn or join your work. So at the end of your round 14, you should have a total of 36 stitches. For round 15, you are going to single crochet 
in each of the next four stitches. And then single crochet two together in the next two stitches. Repeat that single crochet in each of the next four stitches. And single crochet two together. Repeat that all the way around at the end of round 15 you will have a total of 30 stitches. For round 16, you are going to single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And single crochet uh, two together in the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around, single crochet in each of the next three stitches and single crochet two together over the next two. Repeat that all the way around and you're going to have a total of 24 stitches at the end of this round. For round 17, you're going to single crochet in each of the next two stitches and then single crochet two together. Repeat that all the way around. Single crochet in each of the next two stitches and single crochet two together. At the end of this round you are going to have a total of 18 stitches. For round 18, you are going to single crochet in the next stitch and then single crochet two together. Repeat that all the way around, single crochet in the next stitch and single crochet two together. At the end of this round, you are going to have a total of 12 stitches. So in the end, the head is going to look like this and you'll have a small opening there at the bottom. At the end of this round 18, you are going to join with a slip stitch in that first stitch and then you are going to fasten off your work leaving a long tail. However long you feel you will need in order to sew the head on to your blanket. So you're just going to fasten off, leaving a long tail. Then at this time, you can take your small amount of yarn, of black yarn or embroidery floss, whatever you would like, and you can embroider into the face of your bear, its nose and its eyes. I prefer when I'm making children's toys to embroider uh, the eyes and the nose on, just it's fewer pieces that can come off uh, and uh, yeah, it's just fewer, fewer pieces to get lost and, and come off making it dangerous for baby. So uh, go ahead and do that. Once you have embroidered the face onto your bear, you're going to set that head aside and get ready to work the, um, the arms. Now to work the arms for your bear, you're going to make two arms uh, for the bear. So you're going to repeat these instructions. You're going to start by making your magic ring 
And then you're going to work six single crochet stitches into that ring. For the arms, again, you're using your four millimeter crochet hook. You're going to tighten your ring. Once again, you will not be joining or turning at the end of each round. You're going to be uh, using your stitch marker to mark your place. After you've worked round one, your six single crochet stitches into your ring, you're going to begin round two. In round two, you're going to work two single crochet stitches into each stitch. Remember to work to mark that first stitch. At the end of round two, you will have a total of 12 stitches. Now, at this time, before you go on any further, you're going to want to tighten that magic ring and you're going to want to weave in your end at this point to make sure that uh, it's nice and secure because the arm is so narrow, you're not going to want to have to go back and tuck in your ends after and you don't want them pulling undone, which can happen if you don't uh, fasten off this end quite well from your magic ring. There we go. Okay, so now you can continue and uh, we're going to begin working round three and in round three you're going to start working in the back loop only. So in the back loop only, you are going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. To work in your back loop, you're going to look at the top of your stitch, you'll see a horizontal bar running closest to you, and then one in back of that, that makes sort of a V. To work in the back loop, you're only going to work under that loop there that's furthest away from you. Okay, so work your first single crochet stitch in that back loop and be sure to mark it and then working in the back loop of each stitch you're going to single crochet all the way around again you will have 12 stitches at the end of this round and at the end of each round from here on out for your arm go. So that's what you will have. Now for the next 11 rounds, you are simply going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So for the next 11 rounds until round 14, single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Be sure to keep moving your stitch marker up. After you are finished, you are going to fasten off again, leaving a long tail because you're going to want to sew these pieces together. So leave a long tail. You can set arm number one aside and go ahead and make arm number two, repeating the rounds uh, that we have just worked and will work. So once you have made your two arms, come on back here and uh, we will work on making our ears. Okay, so once you have worked your two arms, you are going to set them aside once again and you're going to uh, work the ears. Now the ears for the bear are quite quick and simple. What you're going to do is I started by making a magic ring. And into my magic ring, I worked four single crochet stitches. So chain one and work four 
single crochet stitches then chain one and slip stitch into the ring now then I tightened my ring but not so tight that it formed around uh, formed a circle I just wanted to bring it in a little bit closer next you're going to chain one you're going to turn your work skip that first slip stitch and into each of the next four stitches single crochet again for this you're using your four millimeter crochet hook then chain one and slip stitch back into your ring you're going to see that it's going to curl your ears inward a little bit you're going to do that one more time chain one and turn your turn your work now working into skip that first slip stitch work into the next single crochet and work one single crochet in each of those next four stitches chain one and slip stitch back into your magic ring you're then going to fasten off once again leaving a long tail to sew the ear to the top of the head then what you can do is the tighter that you pull your magic ring the more curled your ear becomes so you can decide how curled in you would like your little bear ear or how flat and then you're just going to set that ear aside repeat that for the second ear and then meet me back here and we will work on sewing all of our pieces together. Okay, so you've now worked your two arms, your head, your little ears, and your blankie. You're going to start to sew your pieces together now. What you're going to do is you're going to take your head to begin and you're going to kind of puff it out here a little bit. Then starting with one of your ears, and what I did is I had uh, that little shorter end, I just kind of tucked it in there, uh, so I only have the one long end now to help sew it on. You're going to take your yarn needle and thread your yarn through, and you're going to find your desired placement for that first ear. So it might help to kind of flatten the head a little bit if you'd like find where you would like to place your first ear and then begin to sew it on now with it folded i simply just did a very tight uh i don't know what kind of stitch you would call it but um i just kind of went around like this kept my stitches tight made sure i was working through both pieces you want to make sure that your ear is very, very secure. You don't want it to come off. So work it very, very tight. And the number of stitches you do, it depends on what you are comfortable with. And then once you are happy with that first ear and how it is sewn on, you're then going to fasten off and weave in that end. With your first ear complete, you're going to take your second ear, thread it through your yarn needle, then decide where you would like to place that second ear. Once you know where you'd like to have it placed, then you can begin to sew it on. Okay. 
and basically do the same as you did for the other ear. Make sure it is nice and secure. Once uh, you're happy with how it is sewn on, once again fasten off and weave in your ends. Now with your ears sewn on, you are going to take your fiber fill and we're now going to stuff the head and this you can stuff it as plush as you would like or as firm as you would like you're just going to stick in as much as you need just like so There we go. And you're going to set it aside just briefly. You're then going to take your two arms and you're going to stuff them as well with a little bit of fiber fill. The challenge here is making sure that the arms are stuffed to the same thickness. There we go. I'm going to take a little bit of that one and put it in here. That's better. Okay. Then what I did to make sure that my arms were extra secure, I first sewed the arms on to the head. So I took the head and I just had my arms coming out the sides. I threaded on my yarn needle. decided where I wanted to place them and then sewed them to the underside. I made sure that I went through all thicknesses and again make sure it is quite secure. You will be sewing over top of it again when you go to sew the head onto the blanket part but uh, it can't hurt to be extra cautious and just make sure that your stitches are tight. So once I finished this I fastened off and wove in my ends and then I did the same for the other arm placing it coming out the other side of my bear. So go ahead and do that and then we will sew on the head. Okay, so I have my little uh, bear here. The arms are sewn on along with the ears. And uh, now it's time to sew this piece onto the blanket. So what I did was I took my blanket and I laid it out. And I wanted my bear, so I found one of the corners, the corner I wanted to be the front, and I. I sewed the bear on so that his head face was facing one of the corners. So he's sewn on the diagonal. I found the center of my blanket and there's a few ways you can do that. Uh, you can fold your blanket over twice and then you know that your center spot is here up at the top. So if uh, you do that uh, or else you can measure in, it's up to you how you would like to do that. So then once I knew where the middle of my blanket was, you can pin it in place if you'd like or just work very carefully. I laid my bear on top. Once again, he is facing one of the corners. Okay. I then threaded my yarn needle and very much like how I sewed on the ears and the hands. I began to sew my bear in place. Now this was a little bit trickier because you're going to be sewing around the entire outside. I didn't lay it flat, I just sewed all the way around the uh, the opening there in my blanket making sure that the stitches were tight 
and uh, I think I actually for my bears I went around twice just because I wanted to make sure that this head was not going to come off. So just sew all the way around sewing through all layers of thickness when you come to your arms and when you are happy uh, with uh, with how secure it is I always I just do a little, couple little tugs to make sure that it is on there secure once you're happy with it you can fasten off and weave in your ends and you will have your little sorry about that hit the camera you'll have your little peekaboo lovey so thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to crochet the peekaboo lovey. Uh, be sure to follow me on social media. I love to see the projects that you're working on and uh, hear how uh, the patterns went. So please let me know. Give this video a like. Also subscribe and share and comment. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.